I'm Shay Russell from mining.com.au and joining me today is Simon Wensley, the Chief Executive and Managing Director for Metro Mining. Simon, how are you today? Yes, good morning, Shay. Well, good evening uh, in the US where you are. So look, yeah, very well, thank you. And uh, I hope you're feeling good too. I certainly am feeling good about my extended uh, trip to get to the US, but we're not here to talk about my travel woes. I want to talk about an obscure metal that I personally believe doesn't get enough attention. Uh, however, it is a critical mineral and hopefully, hopefully we can expand on why it's critical in further videos. But let's talk about the absolute bare bones basics of aluminium, because let's be honest, people don't wake up each morning and say, I want to go find out about aluminium today, but they absolutely need to know about it. Let's start with the absolute basics. What is aluminium? Yeah, thanks, Shay. Look, aluminium is probably one of the most versatile metals that we have uh, in our economy. It's, you know, over the, the past sort of 100 years, we've gotten to know it as a building material uh, and, you know, aluminium foil, right? You wrap your food in it and, and so on. So that's been, you know, those kind of things, tin cans, uh, uh, you know, beer, beer holders, beer cans, you know, these are the things that, that have have allowed aluminium to grow in our economy, but there's a there's a very different dynamic occurring right now. Um, aluminium is effectively the most um, the, the most important metal in the decarbonisation story. So as we move forward in trying to decarbonise our economy, aluminium is the biggest beneficiary to that, and it comes from several different but related angles. The first is we're trying to make things lighter weight. So where we might have used steel or, or lead or other metals in the past, or indeed even timber, um, aluminium is playing a role in light weighting. And light weighting is important, and it's you know been used obviously in aircraft for a long time, but it's becoming a lot more used in railways systems and now in cars. And the reason that we want to lightweight uh, our vehicles and our, our transportation is that it uses less fuel. So whether that's uh, you know, petrol, diesel, or, or electricity, we want things to be lighter weight. And so you're seeing now cars with aluminium frames, aluminium bodies, um, you know, the, the the Teslas that you see on the road have probably got three to 400 kilograms of, of aluminium in each in, in each vehicle. So that's that's a critical growth area. And we all know that EVs are becoming, you know, one of the, one of the most important parts of our transportation system. The next is related to that, but batteries. So batteries, particularly electric vehicle batteries, um, are, are then obviously critical to, to driving the electric vehicles. The second most important element in a battery is aluminium. So after graphite, it's normally aluminium. So aluminium is a crucial part of the aluminium housing and the structure and the way that the, the battery works. The next, the next area is in electricity generation. So if you've got solar panels on your roof, as most people do these days, you'll notice that all of the infrastructure around the actual uh, voltaic, uh, the, the solar voltaic sort of panel is all aluminium because it's lightweight. It's easier to move up onto the roof. It's uh, less less strain on the roof and so on. So there can actually be no solar panels without aluminium. Aluminium is, is, is critical to that industry. We're also seeing it in wind turbines and, and, and of course, in in. Um, you know, in other electricity uh, generation systems. And that leads me to the, the last part, which is electricity grids. Now, there's a little, you know, copper is often uh, touted as, you know, a critical metal. It is also for the energy transition, but it's actually dwarfed by aluminium. There's more aluminium in an electricity grid than copper. So you see it in the, uh, it, it's it, uh, aluminium is an electricity conductor just like copper. However, it's about a quarter of the price of copper. So if you're a sensible uh, electricity uh, grid construct, uh, constructor, you are weaving in uh, aluminium into your, uh, into your wires, into your poles, and all of those sorts of things. So as, as decarbonization requires us to change the way we think about grids, about where electricity is generated, and how we transport that electricity cost-effectively, aluminium plays a critical role. So whilst construction at the moment, for example, in, in Asia, particularly in China, is in a little bit of the doldrums, we're still seeing massive growth in the demand for aluminium because of all those other 
all those other elements that are coming through. So, you know, it, it is a really, really important part of, of, of our past, but it's also an inc incredibly important part of our future. Um, that's very interesting. I actually didn't know that al um, aluminium could be a good substitute for copper in certain places on the electrification grid. Mm. So thank you. I learned something today. Uh, but more importantly, I do comment periodically during the week, during a news update on the aluminium price. And I noticed that it has been rising. Uh, tell me, can you talk me through some of the fundamentals of what's been a price driver here? Sure. Well, uh, what we're seeing then in, in the aluminium space is this demand growth. And even... Um, you know, given its history and, and the production base that it's got, this new demand coming forward is starting to challenge the production base of the aluminium sector. So we're seeing, even with construction in, 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 in difficult times in some places, we're still seeing 4%, 5% per annum growth in demand for aluminium. Within that, over the last 15 or 20 years, China has been the major um supplier of of aluminium metal it's so it's been building big aluminium smelters uh on the back of either coal or hydro and indeed sometimes nuclear uh you know nuclear power and they've been supplying you know at relatively low cost the uh the the the, the demand for aluminium however that is starting to cap out uh, china will next year cap the amount of aluminium production that it that it or aluminium capacity that it will have, and that will be at about forty five million million tons, and that's already starting to play into the price dynamic for aluminium because almost all of that capacity is already built. There will still probably be creep in that capacity, so I, I think that really applies to greenfield, big greenfield um, smelters. So we're probably still going to see upgrades from existing smelters, etc. But what that what that says is that the, the next round of aluminium capacity that needs to come into play, uh, you know, in 2025, 26, 27, has probably got to come from somewhere else. And if those plans aren't already in train, then we're going to see a shortage of aluminium. And that's, that dynamic is starting to play out because we're not seeing quite yet the plans for those new smelters coming into place. So that could be India or it could be Malaysia could be North America, it could be South, you know. So, you know, there are what you need is relatively competitively priced uh, aluminium, and you also need to be have a source a source of alumina. So, those sorts of elements are now being, you know, I guess sorted through by potential aluminium producers. But we're not seeing the market isn't seeing that kind of um, you know uh, those plans put in place, and that you know it takes obviously a, a couple of years to plan to to get approvals, then to construct and, and so on and so on. And you've got to have the power, the power grid that goes with it. So it's already clear that there could well be a bit of a supply demand shortage. There's also another factor, which is a little bit more short term, which is this, um, the whole Russian, uh, you know, Russia, Ukraine, the implications of, of sanctions. And so Russian aluminium is being, you know, shunned, if you like, from certain supply chains. And we all know that as soon as you put um, you know, you, you put a, 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 some kind of blockage in those uh, supply chains that you're going to get a distortion and prices tend to rise. So you're seeing a bit of a short term effect as well. So I think there's a long and short term issue going on here. Uh, and finally, let's just indulge the geology nerd in me just one little bit. Uh, Aluma isn't found in nature like gold or silver is, you know, you're not picking chunks of it out of the ground. It's actually a byproduct of bauxite ores, isn't it? Well, not a byproduct. It's, it, it is. Um, Oh, yeah, box, alumina, aluminium oxide is found in bauxite. Bauxite is the only way that you can make um, alumina, and the only way that uh, and alumina is the only way you can make primary aluminium. So, um, alumina is uh, tends to be Al two O three. It's uh, it, it is um, you know it's got strong um, oxygen bonds, and that's what gets broken in the aluminium smelting process. So that's why you need to pump a fair bit of electricity into that and that's what creates the aluminium metal in those uh in those uh, smelting pots but bauxite starts out it's a relatively common material around the world in 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 the in the earth's crust but it only occurs at the high grades in very few places and it tends to be in uh, around the the equator so you're seeing just north or just south of the equator um and that's why northern australia for example in uh, northern Queensland and also in uh, 
um, you know, Gove in Northern Territory, for example, have high grade bauxite. You also find it a bit in Brazil and Jamaica, in uh, West Africa, also in Indonesia. So this is where you get the higher grade material. And higher grade is obviously if you're shipping, if you're moving bauxite around, you're transporting it, you obviously want to have um, as high a grade as possible to reduce your transportation costs. So very similar dynamic to say iron ore with the FE content in iron ore or the kilocalorie content in coal. You, If you're going to start moving a, a heavy bulk commodity around, you want it to have as high a proportion of what you're after in that in that ore. Now, Metro's bauxite is part of the famous Weeper, Weeper bauxite plateau that's been mined for the last 60 years. And we have a very high grade bauxite, which is above above 50 percent alumina. So, you know, when somebody buys our bauxite, they're, they're buying a bauxite that's got over half of the content of what they're actually after, which is the AL203 as they make alumina, uh, in uh, uh, which then gets processed into into aluminium metal. Uh, listen, Simon, we will have to call time there today, but I'm absolutely going to insist that you come back on so we can talk about uh, the processing and how uh, Metro Mining is doing this. Uh, listen, I just want to say thank you very much for being here today. I've thoroughly enjoyed today's conversation. I've certainly learned something. Um, this was a great chat. I hope to speak to you again soon. Great, Shay. Thanks very much.